never heard of the place. Change. Everything is changing. Robots are replacing doctors. Mail has been usurped by email and text and tweet. The five and dime became Kmart and then Walmart. Then who knows what's next? While Sears and Roebuck catalogs have been overtaken by Amazon. Heck, it seems in some ways that the gladiators of the past have been replaced by professional wrestling, which has further morphed into politics, with its showmanship and to the death enemies. Even the ever trusted paper map has been replaced by GPS, and the encyclopedia has been booted into obscurity by Google. Rock solid. But real estate, good old terra firma, still remains rock solid and unchanged. Mount McKinley still stands proud in Alaska. New York City is still in New York State. LA and San Francisco still remain in California. Solid as the ground under your feet, right? Well, maybe not as stable and unchanging as you might wish. For example, Mount McKinley is now Denali. In fact, it was Denali before it was McKinley. And New York City? It was New Amsterdam and then New Orange before it was New York. LA and San Francisco? Yep, San Francisco was Yorba Buena. And Los Angeles used to be called El Pueblo de Nuestra Sonora La Reina de Los Angeles de la Porciuncula. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Fort Dearborn became Chicago, Illinois, and Shawmut became Boston, Massachusetts. And Phoenix, Arizona? Well, before that, it was East Phoenix, and before that, it was Mill City, and before that, it was Elwig Mill, and before that, it was Schwellings Mill, and before that, it was just the Dry Salt River Valley inhabited by the Hohokam tribe, who actually had a pretty good thing going. But wait, there's more. Atlanta, Georgia. After the Creek Indians were forced off the land, early settlers called it Cane Break. And then it got the name Terminus, because it marked the end of a railroad line. And then it was known as Deanville and Thrasherville and Lumpkin and Mitchell, and then in its first formal incorporation into a town, it was labeled Marthasville, and then Atlanta, and then there is St. Paul, Minnesota, formerly known as Imkizazken, translated into English, Little White Rock. White settlers got a hold of it, and it became Fort Snelling, and then Pig's Eye Peron, or Pig's Eye Landing. Hmm. But a chapel was built some three miles away from Pig's Eye, and the chapel was called St. Paul. And, well, I guess nobody wanted to say they were from Pig's Eye, so St. Paul got the nod. There are so many places that have changed their names, from Big Lick, which became Roanoke, Virginia, to Fort Pontchartrain, to Detroit, now known as Detroit, or the Motor City, and La Villa de San Francisco Javier de Albuquerque. Again, I'm sure I pronounced that horribly, but that has been shortened down to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Change doesn't need to take several years. It can happen, seemingly in the blink of an eye. Like that open space a few blocks away that became a housing development. Those old buildings that they tore down to build an office building. Not to mention how people change. Kids seem to grow up faster than expected. And I don't know about you, but all my friends got old. <laughs> and the longer you're on the earth, the more change you will have to accept. But why? It's a simple case of mathematics. The longer you've been around, the more you've experienced and the more advancements have occurred and the more crazy ideas, disasters, fads, and fashions that have come and gone. 
And if you've only been around a decade or two, well, you haven't seen much. And a small change can seem huge. People, like places, change and their names and what they do, but it doesn't change who they are. It seems nothing stays exactly the same. Well, there are potentially many little ounce-sized nuggets of wisdom to learn from all these changes. But for now, might I suggest just this one? Here's an ounce from our brief examination of how stuff changes over time, and sometimes all at once. So, if I were to ask, where are you from?, is there more than one answer? If I ask you where you are or where you are going, is it a name on a map? Is it even a place? Or is it a goal in your head? A destination without definition? Or an idea? Though names and even the places themselves might change, the touch points in our lives don't disappear. Where we grew up, where we graduated high school, our first real job, our first love, our deeply held beliefs and values, key memories of what once was and hopes of what might be are right there. So here's the ounce. We all have our enduring reference points, those things that guide us and orient us. They are the ones that make an indelible mark in our hearts. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Hey, thanks for joining us for this whole video. If you appreciated this video, why not take just a moment longer and click that like button or leave a comment and subscribe to the podcast. We really appreciate it. It helps us a lot. And it helps us show the algorithms out there in the World Wide Web thingy that we're worth watching. Thanks.